King of the Mountain. We're back, and it's time for King of the Mountain tournament number three. The drivers are ready to start. We've got Corky Bacon starting off on the front right and Ethan Murphy on the front left. Wow, look at Corky Bacon off to an early lead. He's like a pig running from a farmer before a holiday meal. We've got CZ in second. Whoa, Corky Bacon gets loose. He's going to keep it going in reverse. He's struggling at keeping that car going straight, looking through his rear view mirror. He's doing it, though. Let's see if he makes it all the way to the line. Whoa! Maybe I spoke too soon. Ooh. Oh, that hurt. And Corky Bacon makes it past the finish line on his Watch roof. Watch out. Ouch! Oh. Albert Vetti, a savage out there on the track. That was cold-blooded. At least Ethan Murphy had the courtesy to go around the wreckage. That was a rough start for Corky Bacon, but he still manages to take first place, so not bad. Impressive driving for going in reverse. Right here, he almost lost it all. Nothing like a good old-fashioned roof slide across the finish line to take the win. Corky Bacon with five points on the board, followed by CZ with three. They'll both be starting from the back this race. We've got Ethan Murphy on the front right and Albert Vetti on the front left. This time we've got Albert Vetti in the lead going down the first straight. CZ once again in second place right behind Albert Vetti. He's not far behind. He's looking for the pass. CZ rear ends Vetti on the turn. That gave Albert Vetti a boost. He's around the last corner. CZ hunting him down like a shark. Albert Vetti oh. gets sideways. And Albert Vetti will just barely hold on to the lead to take the win in the second race. CZ once again takes second place. He is aggressive out there on the track. Ethan Murphy gets stuck over on the last straightaway. And we've got Corky Bacon off the track over on turn two. That's going to be zero points for both drivers. Right here, CZ almost finds an opening around Albert Vetti, but Vetti gets sideways in that Nissan skyline, blocking the path for CZ. Here we go at the start of the third race. We've got Albert Vetti on the front right and CZ on the front left. This should be another good race between CZ and Albert Vetti. This time CZ starting off in the front row. So we'll see who has the faster car. CZ with a slight lead going into turn one. They're close. They are side by side with Corky Bacon in third. CZ takes the lead around the corner. And Corky Bacon loses control blocking Albert Vetti. That leaves CZ all alone to take the win on the third race. Man, that was a good race until Corky Bacon got in the way. Speaking of Bacon, here he comes. Well, look at that. Here comes Corky Bacon to take second place. I don't know how he managed to do that. I thought he wrecked. We've got Albert Vetti and Ethan Murphy stuck over on turn three. Here's another look at that exchange. CZ pulls ahead on the turn. Corky Bacon trying to take second, but then he gets pushed sideways. That spun him around, but somehow he managed to get control of the car and got it turned back around. Look at that right there. Corky Bacon was not going to give up that second place spot to Albert Vetti. Here comes Murphy. That right there gave Corky Bacon a push around that corner to send him down the track to the finish line. And here we go at the start of the fourth and final race. CZ, your current leader with 11 points, followed by Corky Bacon with eight. They are both starting off in the front row. Corky Bacon definitely needs to win this one if he wants a chance of moving on. That's going to be a tall order with CZ on the track. That is a fast Evo. Look at Corky making his way up to the front. He's on the inside. CZ blocks it. CZ blocking all kinds of traffic. He's still in the lead. Just a little further and he's got it. Here he comes. And once again, an Evo dominates on the track as CZ moves on to the third tournament in King of the Mountain. That's a big win for CZ, a six point gap between him and second place. Look at this exchange right here. Corky Bacon goes from third up to second, almost first, but look at Albert Vetti passing on the outside, almost finding his way up to first, but CZ puts the block on him. I don't know what's up with these Evos and King of the Mountain, but it almost seems like the perfect car. Yes, they certainly have done well in King of the Mountain history. It's time for qualifying race two of tournament number three. We've got Mickey Fume starting on the front right and Bicycle Horse on the front left. Bicycle Horse, that's an interesting name. Mickey Fume is with the lead around the first corner, followed by Bicycle Horse. Maybe we can call him BH. Dad and Charlie Armo taking their sweet time down the track as Mickey Fume surrounds the last corner and he will pick up the first win, followed by Bicycle Horse in second place. We're missing somebody. And... There he is. It looks like we have Charlie Amro taking third. What happened to dad? Who's dad? My dad? No, the driver. Oh, I'm sure he's wrecked somewhere. Yep, there he is on turn two. Dad upside down on his roof. Well, that's disappointing. Let's see what happened there on the replay. Here comes dad in front of Charlie. Classic. He went up high on the turn, but did not have enough speed. Some nice driving there by Charlie getting around that Mercedes. That's going to be zero points for dad. Charlie Amro picks up two. Bicycle Horse with three, and Mickey Fumes currently in the lead with five. BH starting this race off on the front right with Charlie Amro on the left. Right now, your top two drivers appear to be Mickey Fumes and Bicycle Horse. Look at them, they're way out in front. 
Charlie Amro and Dad doing some Sunday driving back there. Mickey Fumes hot on the tail of B.H. Mickey Fumes passes on the inside. He gets Whoa, sideways. Billy. Fumes straightens it out. They're fighting for first. They're in the last corner. Mickey Whoa. Fumes is over. He crashes, leaving Bicycle Horse all alone on the track to pick up the second race. Oh, man, what a race. That was a nail biter for sure. Mickey Fumes almost taking the checkered flag on that one. Unfortunately, he wrecks, so he will get zero points for that race. Charlie Amro also flipped over on two. Dad gets stuck right behind him. Let's take another look at that amazing pass right there. Mickey Fumes going on the inside. He understeers coming out of it. Bicycle Horse hitting his door. Then right here, they're side by side going into the last corner. BH takes the inside, forcing Mickey Fumes high into that turn. Unfortunately, he did not have enough speed to make it all the way around. And here's a look at Charlie Amro and Dad. I really don't know what they're doing in this race. Yeah, can someone come get their dad? Here we go at the start of race three. We have Charlie Amro on the front right and Dad on the front left. This should be an interesting one. Both of those drivers trailing in points, so this is their chance to catch up. Dad taking the early lead down the first straight. Both front row drivers really slowing this race down. I think they're driving with their brakes on. Here they are in the open section. Dad with the lead, followed by Mickey Fumes. Mickey understeers again, coming out of that corner. Dad starting to pick up the pace here in the final turn. And it looks like this race will go to Dad. Followed by Mickey Fumes in second. Oh, uh, what happened to Charlie? I'm not sure. I thought he was coming down here, but he got stuck. And Bicycle Horse gets stuck behind him as well. Not a good night for Charlie Amro. He's only finished one race so far. That was Dad's first time past the finish line, but he picks up five points. That puts him within three points of the lead, which is shared by Mickey Fumes and Bicycle Horse. Both drivers have eight points each. Mickey Fumes will be starting the final race in the front left with BH in the rear. Dad on the front right with Charlie Amro in the back. Here we go at the final race. Who's going to take it? It's a tie right now between Bicycle Horse and Mickey Fumes. Dad not too far behind in points, but he's going to need a miracle to make it through. A miracle of speed. Speaking of speed, look at Mickey Fumes. He is flying down the track. He's not running on fumes today. He's been having trouble all night in this corner with understeering, but not this time. He's blazing down the track. Mickey Fumes into the final turn. Perfect. Handles it clean. Oh, ho. And Mickey Fumes oh, yeah. just set wow. a sub-17 second track time. 16.302 oh, seconds. Oh my sweet Aston Martin, that was fast. Oh man. Let me let me analyze what just happened there, 3D. Three Germans and a Brit enter a pub, and the Brit just owned all of them. Let me tell you, it is nice to see some real speed on this track. That's Mickey Fumes, baby. If he could be a little more consistent with his steering. He will be a force to be reckoned with in this series. I know this is just the second qualifying race, but that right there got me hyped. To be fair, though, you do get hyped pretty easily. What do you mean? Remember when you found that snack-sized bag of Cheetos in the break room? Dude, that was awesome. Point proven. Welcome to King of the Mountain Tournament number three, qualifying race three. Here we go at the start of the first race. We have K-Dog on the front right and Sigma on the front left. Here we go, four Mustangs on the track. What could go wrong? I'm not even going to go there. Whoa, Memphis Reigns tried to switch lanes back there. That slowed everybody down. Everybody except for Sigma. He's got a big lead thanks to Memphis Reigns, who's in second right now. Sigma rounding the final corner. He comes out of it straight, and he will pick up the first win of the night with a track time of 18 points. Whoa! Ooh, that was a hard hit right there. And here comes Memphis Reigns to add insult to injury as he runs into the side of Natasha Black Eagle. You gotta love a little Mustang mayhem. That was an easy win there for Sigma, who picks up five points. Here's another look at that wreck. Keep your eye on the blue car. Boom! Looks like they just kissed their front fenders and turned away from each other. Let's see that one more time from the sky cam. Here they go. Bam! Who do you think won that wreck? I definitely have to give it to Natasha Black Eagle. Her car stayed in the intersection. Sigma got pushed all the way out. Sigma starting race two on the front right with Memphis Reigns on the front left. It's a close race down the first stretch. Sigma and Reigns side by side. Memphis Reigns pulling ahead. Natasha Black Eagle pulls into second. Sigma falls behind a third. Memphis Reigns stretching out that lead. He's in the final corner. Navigates around it perfectly. And Memphis Reigns will pick up the win on race two. That was a strong win right there. Memphis Reigns with a track oh, time oh, of, oh my goodness, again. There's another slice of Mustang mayhem. Another crash at the intersection involving Natasha Black Eagle. She took second on that race. Here's the replay. Keep your eye on K-Dog in the green car right here. Here it comes. Boom. Okay, so I guess we have to score this one too. Uh, this one goes to K-Dog. You know, this is kind of like a, a die-cast sumo wrestling event down here. Hey, you know what? That's not a bad idea. Let's have Susan look into that. I can finally wear that used Mawashi loincloth I bought Whoa, off eBay. No, no, I didn't, I didn't mean actual sumo wrestling. But I thought it would go with the theme. And why would you buy a used Mawashi? Yeah, you know, it was late night. 
I had a few too many old duels. Opened up the old eBay app and I found a good deal. That's just weird. Memphis Reigns once again out in the lead. Natasha Black Eagle gets sideways in front of Sigma. And race three is going to go to Memphis Reigns who picks up his second win. I'm not seeing anyone else down here. Oh, look at that. It's a triple DNF. And that actually means Memphis Reigns will be advancing on to tournament three of King of the Mountain. Wow, he did it in three races. That's right, he has a six point lead, which means there's no way for anyone to catch up to him in points with one race to go. The other drivers have Natasha Black Eagle to thank for that. I think Sigma is part to blame for that as well. The drivers will run the final race just for fun, I guess. Natasha Black Eagle on the front right and K-Dog on the front left in the green car. There's nothing on the line here, so there's really no need for aggressive driving. There's really no need for this race. Yeah, they're doing it for the fans. Natasha in the lead this time, followed by Memphis Reigns. Memphis Reigns, clearly the dominant driver out of this group. He has two wins and finished in second, and it looks like he's gonna take another second place finish right here as Natasha Black Eagle passes the finish line. We had a collision there after the flag. That didn't sound good. Let's see what it is. Oh, and it's Memphis Reigns. I'm really hoping nobody was sitting in that park bench. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure nobody was. There's a witness over there, too. Why are you calling them a witness? This is not a crime scene. Okay. Here we go. We have Joey Clemens on the front right in the blue Chevelle SS and the Retro Rebel on the left in the Corvette Stingray. Retro Rebel off to an early lead followed by Golden Girl. Here they go through turn one. Golden Girl right on the back of the Retro Rebel. The Rebel hits the side, and he gets manhandled by Golden Girl. I think you mean woman handled. Golden Girl rounds the final corner, and she will pick up the first win with a track time of 18.984 seconds. The current track time record in this tournament is 16.302 seconds. Not a great start for the Retro Rebel. He's down on turn two. Let's take a look at that replay. Retro Rebel gets sideways in front of Golden Girl. Golden Girl was having none of it and flipped him right off the track. That right there would have stopped a lot of drivers, but not Golden Girl. She came here to race, not sit in traffic. This time the Retro Rebel and Golden Girl are side by side in the front row. If there's any hard feelings, now's the time to put it on the track. The Retro Rebel with the lead. Now Golden Girl pulls ahead. Golden Girl's lead is growing around that first turn. She's way out in front now. She is gone. That is one fast Chevelle. Look at her go. Here she comes, it's gonna be a hot one. Whoa, 16 second oh, track yeah. time. Whoa. Oh no, Golden Girl gets flipped off the track. She lands on her wheels, but that was a violent wreck. That crash felt like it was in 3D. Well, this is the 3D Bot Maker channel. The Retro Rebel once again with a DNF. Here's another look at that crash. Wow, that was at least two rotations in the air. If we're gonna score it, I give her a nine out of 10. Only nine, she landed it. True, but she didn't land it on the track. Come on, look at that. Yeah, that was impressive. I'll move it up to nine and a half. We should probably point out that the drivers don't get points for wrecking. Maybe they should. Uh, no, we're not trying to encourage that type of behavior. Uh, Remember what happened last week? Oh yeah. We don't need any more surprise visits from the cops. That was strange. I wonder what they were looking for. I don't know, this is Tofu Town. There's not a donut shop for at least a mile away. Mm, donuts. That does sound good. We should talk to Bunta Fujiwara about selling those. Golden Girl once again back out in the lead. She had a little trouble there. Here comes Royale Girl. The Retro Rebel gets stuck again. This time he takes out Joey Clemens. And Golden Girl takes out Royale Girl on three. That was cold-blooded. And Golden Girl picks up her third win in a row. Wow, she is on fire. Royale Girl was right with her all the way down to turn three, but got forced off the road. Meanwhile, with the Retro Rebel, I'm not sure how he qualified that car. Here's another look at Royale Girl and Golden Girl going at it. Right there, Golden Girl takes a hard right into the side door of Royale Girl, forces her off the road, and takes the win like a boss. Three DNFs on that race. Golden Girl is now up by 10 points. Joey Clemens and Royale Girl are both tied with five. The Retro Rebel has zero. A close group as they approach turn one. Royale Girl out in the lead. Golden Girl on her tail. Royale Girl leading through turn two. Whoa, she lost control. She's still going now in reverse. Golden Girl trying to win four in a row. She spins out. And Royale Girl will pick up her first win of the night. 
we almost saw our first ever four wins in a row in King of the Mountain by Golden Girl. What a sad, sad performance by the Retro Rebel. Look at this wild move right here by Royale Girl, spinning her car around. I don't know if she meant to do that or not. She proceeded to continue in reverse, but now look at Golden Girl does the same thing both drivers finishing that race in reverse. Now, normally this would be all over and done, but we've now have the fifth race. That's right, the new five race format. On the fifth race, it is worth double the points. That means Royale Girl still has a chance to tie it up or win. Joey Clemens and the Retro Rebel are too far behind. The drivers are lined up based on points. Golden Girl with the pole position. Well, maybe we shouldn't call it that. That's what it's called in motorsports. Well, yeah, that is true. Golden Girl once again out in the lead, one race away from King of the Mountain Tournament 3. Royale Girl is out there challenging her for that spot. She's closing in on her. Oh man. It's down to the line. Golden Girl with the block. And Golden Girl wins her fourth race of the night, driving in the orange peel. That right there was some next level racing by Golden Girl. The Retro Rebel on the other hand. Oh man, don't even get me started. I mean, even with the extra race. Pathetic. He could not get that Corvette Stingray past the finish line. This race was all about the Chevelles. A good attempt there by Royale Girl. She comes in second place, but unfortunately in the qualifying round, second place is just as good as last. We have James Clement on the front right in the green car, and on the left, Zoe C. Zoe C driving in a car that looks awfully familiar. If you go all the way back to 2018, that is the paint scheme for the Heavy. That's right, the Heavy was the 2018 King of the Mountain. The Heavy weighed almost twice the weight of Zoe C's car. Whoa, Pipsy almost oh. goes over the edge, and down goes Zoe C. That was too close to the edge. And here comes James Clement to pick up the first win of the night. He gets a track time of 18.614 seconds. And look at that, Pipsy makes it past the finish line even after that close call. The same cannot be said for Zoe C in the Evo. Let's take another look at what happened. Pipsy with some aggressive driving there trying to push James Clement out of the way. That almost sent that car off the cliff. And then Pipsy runs into the Evo causing Zoe C to wreck. Good thing there's no law enforcement around because that was some reckless driving. A nice move right here by Ash. She was all the way in the back drove right around the Evo and the Skyline to take second place. Also a little driver history here, James Clement, who's driving in the Mountain Dew, was the builder of the original Heavy and the General Evo. Here we go, we have Zoe C on the front right and Ash on the front left. It's a tight group down the first straight, Ash pulling ahead. Keep your eye on that Evo, they're known to be fast on this track. Ash with the lead, followed by Pipsy. Ash rounding turn two, looking good so far. Zoe C gets loose back there coming out of that turn. Ash flying around that corner. And Ash will take race two, driving in the STI. A nice track time there, 17.160 seconds. What happened to Clement and Zoe C? Zoe C holding up traffic, James Clement gets stuck behind. That's gonna be a double DNF right there. Let's take a look from turn two. Here comes Zoe C, understeering coming out of that turn. James Clement trying to find a way around that car, but unfortunately there was nowhere to go. Here we go with race three. We have Ash on the front right and Pipsy on the front left. Now, am I right that Pipsy's car is called the Soggy Otter? Yeah, I don't get it. Is there some kind of connection between Skylines and, and Sea Mammals? The driver's name is Pipsy, so... Pipsy takes the lead into the open track, having some steering issues there. Ash is right on the tail of that Skyline. Ash taps that bumper and loses control, and it looks like race three will be going to Pipsy. That was a good race. Whoa, oh, Zoe C! flying off the track after the finish line. That is not the first time that's happened in this tournament. Luckily, no one was in that park bench. We should maybe put some caution tape out there or something. Yeah, that might not be a bad idea. Let's take a look at the replay here. A close race between Pipsy and Ash. Ash gets a little too aggressive, ends up steering into the wall. Pipsy a little wobbly and loose in the steering, but they were able to make it past the finish line in that skyline to take the win. Right now, Ash is currently sitting in first place with 11 points. Pipsy one point behind with 10. Pipsy on the front right, James Clement on the front left. Clement is behind the leader by four points. We've still got two races to go, so there's still time. Pipsy pulling ahead, coming down the first straight. Here they go through turn one. Pipsy followed closely behind by Ash. Pipsy all over the track. I think they have steering problems. Ash once again in pursuit, looking for a way to pass around that skyline. And Pipsy will once again hold Ash off. 
and pick up the win on race four. Not a bad track time there, 17.476 seconds. And look at that score, a one point difference between Pipsy and Ash going into the final race. Now in race five, the starting position will be determined by points. So Pipsy will have the advantage on this race. And there's double points up for grabs, right? What? Two times the points. No, why would we do that? Because you said last week that, that's about... That's a ridiculous idea. Okay, but it was your... Look at this battle between Pipsy and Ash. This is what the fifth race is all about. The top two drivers after four races get to start in the front row, and we get to see them go head to head. And with regular points on the board, Yes, right? of course. Pipsy on the front in the purple car, Ash on the front left in the black car. Only one point separating them. Here we go. Pipsy with the early lead as they approach turn one. Here they go through one. Ash not far behind. That lead's getting bigger. Clement in third. Zoe C in fourth. Ash is gaining. Pipsy drives into the wall. Ash oh, goes for the pass. Oh, oh, oh. Did you see that? Oh, we got a problem. Whoa, hold on. Hey, hey. Hold whoa, on. Whoa. whoa. I don't mess with dogs, man. The okay, dog. bro. Easy. Steve. Can you get okay, guys, the what's phone? this all about? Mr. Bob Maker, you're coming with us. Hey, we have a permit to be here, okay? Tootie, so I don't want no problems from you, big boy. Step Who's aside. Calling, big boy? Dude, chill. What do you guys need? We need you to come with us. We can do this the easy way, where you get in the car and take a nice ride down to the station. Or we can do this the hard way, where I have my boys drag you out of here in front of your precious fans. Okay, we're in the middle of a show right now. Can we just wrap this up? Nah. I think you're gonna have to call this little show of yours a DNF. To me, call my lawyer. So we don't have a lawyer. Then call scared. Susan. Okay, I'm on it. And welcome back to King of the Mountain. Uh, we're working with a skeleton crew here as everyone seemed to call off work today. But we do have some diehard fans out here. You guys are awesome. You know what they say, the show must go on. We've got Steve and his brother taking care of the cameras. You're the man, Steve. Also, I called up some buddies of mine. We've got Juan. He'll be filming the races via camera drone. We've also got Carl from Accounting. He'll be taking care of the scoreboard for tonight's race. DJ EcoBoost also bailed on us tonight. But we've got Juan's cousin, Carlos. He's got a pretty sweet sound system in the back of his ride, so we're just rolling with what we got. Here we go at the start of the first race we have. Tito on the front right in the bus and Sergio on the left driving in the white synchro. I believe my notes say Sergio is driving for, uh, he's driving for Team France and Tito for Team Puerto Rico Racing. Right now Sergio is like a mile ahead of everyone else. Oh, he spins around and Sergio brings it on home in reverse to pick up the first win of the night. Not a bad track time either, 17 seconds. And would you look at that, a hot mess on turn three. Do we have access to the track cameras? Oh, we do, cool. All right, here's the replay. Here comes that school bus driven by Tito, and that went exactly as I thought it would. That bus clearly does not belong in this race. And what happened to Bad Dad Davis? What do you think of that, Steve? No comment. Yeah, it's gonna be a long night. Carl's got five points on the board for Sergio, and that's a triple DNF to start things off. Okay, we've got Sergio starting on the front right this time, and Bad Dad Davis on the front left. Sergio once again in the lead. Tito's in second place in that school bus. How is Bad Dad Davis so slow? Doesn't that thing have FTEs? Here comes Sergio to turn three, and he's gonna pick up his second win of the night in this very one-sided race. Whoa, close call there with the school bus. And here comes Bad Dad Davis to take third place. And guess who didn't make it? Captain That's Slow. right, Captain Slow. Like seriously, like, why would you pick a driver whose name is Captain Slow? Carl's got 10 points on the board for Sergio, three for Tito, and two for Bad Dad Davis. You know, I can't help but wonder what Bad Dad Davis did to earn the name Bad Dad. I know what my dad did to earn the name Bad Dad. Randy? What? You talking about Randy? No, Randy was my mom's boyfriend. No, no, he was cool. Randy was the man. Consistent times there by Sergio with another 17 second track time. Here we go with, what number is this, Carl? Race three. Uh, race three. This time, Bad Dad Davis is in the front right and Captain Slow on the front left. Sergio out there really putting the bump in bump drafting, trying to move Bad Dad Davis out of the way. He's trying to find a way around him. Oh, look at that. It's Understeer City coming out of turn two. Bad Dad Davis is still in it. Can he make it? And Bad Dad Davis slowly comes through like a court-ordered child support payment. Carlos playing the classics tonight. 
Go ahead, Carlos. I'm gonna call you DJ Silos. Uh, no. Nope, just Carlos. Si. All right, gotcha. All right, let's see where things went wrong. It all starts when people send in a school bus and a bunch of other crazy cars, and this is what you get. What, Steve? No, I see that look in your face, dude. Here's a look at the scoreboard. Tito has three points. Sergio has ten. Captain Slow with zero. And Bad Dad Davis has seven. There's still two races to go. Leading us down this time will be Captain Slow on the front right and Tito on the front left. Let's see if Captain Slow can get any points in this race. Tito is in the lead, followed by Sergio. Sergio right on Tito's tail. There's another bump. He's looking for a window to pass. Whoa, Sergio gets loose. He's gaining. Ho ho! You see that, Steve? Sergio with a big pass over Tito's bus. And that is his third win of the night. Awesome driving there by Sergio, representing for the French. And look at that. Tito is over. There's Captain Slow behind him. And Bad Dad Davis once again fails to deliver like a card on an eight-year-old's birthday. What's that, Carl? Uh, Carl has done the math. Sergio has an eight-point lead, which means there's no reason to have the fifth race because there's no chance of anyone catching up. So your winner of the night is Sergio driving in, Captivante Uno. Welcome back to Race Mountain. We are anticipating the arrival of 3D. That's right, he has been freed. And there's his car right now. And look at that, 3D accompanied by the Crazy Brothers, James and Jimmy. Shake and bake. Oh man, it is good to be here. What happened? How'd you get out? Oh man, you should have seen it. Susan showed up and ripped Officer Lovesmith a new one for not having his paperwork in order. Can you believe they don't use waivers? What? That's crazy. She also worked out an arrangement for King of the Mountain. Sweet. Now, as long as they keep the races clean and no one gets in a wreck, they won't have any problem. Nice. But if Race Mountain PD gets word that someone has crashed, they're going to be out here looking to impound some cars. What do you say we get this show started? Let's do it. Here we go with race one of five. If the drivers can keep this race clean, we won't have any problems. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. Come on, give them a chance. We've got Luke H taking the early lead with that Cadillac V16. He's followed by the Leviathan in the Tesla. Man, that caddy is fast. Look at him go. That car is known to be fast, and this one is equipped with FTEs. Leviathan hanging in there in second place, but he is no match for Luke H in the fatty as he picks up his first win with a 16. 0.818 second time. A close call at the intersection. Remember guys, we don't want any wrecks. Let's take a look at the replay. Just look at that Caddy 16. It's low to the ground with a long wheelbase. Looks like he's using those fat FTE wheels. Now he had some steering problems. Can you imagine the track time if he kept that thing straight the whole way down? We're only one race in tonight and I think this thing is already over. Hey, a lot can happen in four races. This time we have the Caddy and the Tesla in the front row. Luke H in the Cadillac and Leviathan in the Tesla. Once again, Luke H with the lead on the first straight. Like I said, it's over. Wow, he is way out in front. Look at that fatty go. He's through turn two. Perfect exit. It's gonna be a fast time. Let's see how he handles the final corner. Whoa! Holy smokes! And we've got a new track goal! Luke H that's gonna leave a scratch. goes flying off the track at the Watch end. Watch out! Oh, come on. See, that's what's gonna get the attention of the police. Could he not find his brake pedal? Reckless driving for sure. But did you see that track time? 15.844 seconds. You know, I thought I smelled something burning, and it was Luke H lighting up that fatty. Yeah, right before he went crashing through the intersection. You think that's gonna get the attention of the cops? Let's see, a car went flying off the track. I'm gonna say probably yes. Hey, at least we're covered. That's right, because we got them waivers. Oh, wow, so much enthusiasm over a piece of paper. Hey, it's a powerful piece of paper to thee. There goes Andrew L slamming into that Tesla. Here we go at the start of race three. We have Leviathan on the front right in the Tesla and Juicy Juice on the front left in the Red Viper. Ah, uh, yes, Juicy Juice. I, I believe they've raced in King of the Mountain before. Yeah, they do sound familiar. Juicy Juice is a quality drink. They're just not a great driver. Right now, it's Leviathan and Luke H. And it sounds like the cops are out there. Yep, there they go. Wow, they are on it. If you get pulled over, your car will be impounded for street racing. Looks like Leviathan and Luke H are safe. Yeah, as long as you make it to the intersection, you're fine. That's where the jurisdiction ends. Oh, whoa. Juicy Juice sticking it to the man. <laughs> 
Oh man, you know, I cannot say that doesn't make me happy. Hey, welcome to King of the Mountain. That's right, you can look over here all you want. We got waivers! We've got to take another look at that. Here comes Juicy Juice. Side swipes that pursuit car. What a hit. Let's see that again from the sky cam. You know you're liking this a little too much. Hey, I didn't start this. Boom. Ha <laughs> ha, that does not get old. Street racers versus cops. Racers one, cops zero. Here we go with race four. Luke H currently in the lead with 13 points. Leviathan in second place with 11. And then we've got Andrew L with six and Juicy Juice with three. So it's pretty much a two car race. Uh, yeah. Andrew L and Juicy Juice in the front row this time. Andrew L with the lead. Luke H in the fatty looking to pass. He got shut down. Andrew L just barely holding onto that lead as he approaches the third turn. Luke H knocking on his door. He's going for it. And there's another block by Andrew L as he just barely holds on to first place for the win. That's gonna tie Andrew L with the Leviathan. Both of them have 11. Luke H with a five point lead over the competition with one to go. Look at this block right here by Andrew L first on turn two. Luke H and the blue caddy not giving up. Look at him chase him down the track right here. There's a little love tap. The whole way to the finish line trying to find a way around that dodge. It looks like he has him right here, but look at Andrew L. A hard cut to the right as he slides sideways past the finish line. Hey, what happened to the police? I don't know. Maybe after that hit from Juicy Juice, he's rethinking his assignment. Here we go with the fifth and final race. Luke H with a five-point lead. I think it's over. Yeah, Luke H would have to get a DNF for Leviathan or Andrew L to tie. Yeah, look at him go again. That car is fast. He is certainly in a league of his own tonight. When he's in the front row, nobody's touching him. Smoking. And the cops are back out. Luke H rounds the final corner, and you can stick a fork in this one because it is done. Luke H is your winner of the night, and we'll be moving on to the third tournament in King of the Mountain. Uh-oh, we got some problems on turn two. Uh, we? We don't have any problems. Oh, that's right. We have waivers, and we are on private property. Ah, uh, yeah. They, Andrew L. and Juicy Juice, do have a problem, and they're probably gonna lose their cars. Check out that tug and roll maneuver by the pursuit car. Cars that get impounded will be sent to the impound lot, where they may have a chance of appearing on King of the Mountain again in the future. I don't think anyone wants to see the Juicy Viper on the track again. The top driver will advance on to the third tournament in King of the Mountain. Here we go, we've got Carl starting on the front right. He's in the lead, followed by AJ Rivera in that Ford Thunderbird. Is it just me, or is there a minion driving that yellow car? I don't think we should be name-calling on the show. I'm not calling him a name. Here it's... comes Carl around the final corner. Looks good. You know there's a pretty famous minion named Carl. It's just a name, 2D. And Carl picks up a track time of 18.364 seconds. Bill Vincent takes second place, and AJ Rivera stuck over on the track wall. Dev Munchkin getting held up behind him. That was a clean run by Carl. You know those minions are capable of just about anything. Enough of the minion talk. Carl appears to be a good driver. Look at how he handles those corners. Look at him right there. His head is yellow. Anyways, Carl picks up five points, followed by Bill Vincent with three points. AJ Rivera and Dev Munchkin both got a DNF. They've got some making up to do in points. Bill Vincent starting on the front right in the purple haze 442. Dev Munchkin on the left in the Starburst. It's a close group as they enter the first corner. Bill Vincent with a slight lead, followed by Carl. Dev in third, AJ Rivera in fourth. They're through turn two, Bill Vincent holding onto that lead. Carl moving up for the pass. He's going for it into the final corner, but Bill Vincent pulls ahead. And Bill Vincent will pick up the win on race two. Followed by Carl in second place, and Dev Munchkin in third. Where is AJ Rivera? Another DNF. What did he just decide to stop there at the end of the track? Someone let him know the finish line is over here. Look at this overtake attempt by Carl going into the final corner. Great driving there by Bill Vincent to hold on to that lead. That's two races with no wrecks. I think these guys may have learned from last oh, week. Oh, come on, don't jinx it. Hey, it's no fun having your car impounded by the cops. Yeah, but now that you mentioned it, they're probably all gonna wreck on this race. Yeah, you're probably right. And here we go with race three. AJ Rivera pulling ahead as they approach turn one. The minion in second place. Nope, that's just Carl. Dev Munchkin falling way behind as this turns into a two-car race. Uh -oh. Whoa, never mind, it's a one-car race now. AJ Rivera all alone through the final corner. The rest of the cars are way behind. 
and AJ Rivera will pick up his first win of the night with a track time of 20.164 seconds. That's three races with three different winners. Bill Vincent moves up to the first place spot with 11 points, Carl with 10, AJ Rivera with five, and Dev can't find the finish line, Munchkin with two. Right here is where Carl lost control. Look at that. His car got spun around. Look at this right here, watch that Ford Galaxy. Ooh. Whoa, almost going off the edge. McClyde must have been looking down upon him right there. I think so. Race and peace, McClyde. McClyde. And here we go with race four. We've got Carl back up in the front row on the front left in the yellow car. AJ Rivera on the right in the number 11 red. AJ Rivera giving Carl a run for his money. Look at him go. Looks like there was an accident back there on turn one. It's a two car race. AJ Rivera and Carl. Carl moving up for the pass and he does it. Go, minions, go. What a move by Carl. And he'll pick up his second win of the night with a track time of 18.598 seconds. The track times are certainly slower this week than last. Well, I guess there's no need to break any track records when you're racing against Bill Vincent and Dev can't find the finish line Munchkin. Speaking of Dev, he's having trouble finding the track. Yeah, he clearly should not be here. Maybe he got lost and took a wrong turn. He definitely took a wrong turn. Here's another look at that great pass by Carl. AJ cuts to the right, opening that door for Carl to move in on the outside. And once again, just look at how Carl handles these corners. A slight bump there, but he keeps it straight all the way to the finish line. Carl has a four point lead over AJ Rivera, so we will be going into the fifth race. The starting position in the fifth race is determined by points. Bill Vincent, the only one here with a chance of tying Carl or even winning. With the way Carl's been driving, Bill Vincent doesn't have a chance. Also, that's four races with no wrecks. Wow, that is a rare thing in King of the Mountain. Carl with the lead, AJ Rivera challenging him. He doesn't have enough points to win, but you got to applaud his effort. Rivera falling way behind now as Carl approaches the finish line, and he will be your winner of the night, driving in the Zinger. Way to go, Minions. You know, now that you mention it, Carl does look awfully familiar. Right. Yellow face, uh -huh. the goggles. Yep. Lack of hair, uh -huh. strange speech pattern. I'm telling you. I just can't put my finger on it. The Minions. 2D, I think it's offensive it's to call them It's the name that. of the movie. Just because you saw it in a movie doesn't make it right. There is literally no other name to call them. We can call them people. They're not people. Wow. Oh, come on. Wow. That got offensive real quick. You've had to have seen the movie. Despicable Me, then they had their own spin-off movie. Despicable You, 2D. Despicable You. The drivers tonight will face off in five races. Whoever has the most points will advance on to the third tournament of King of the Mountain. Here we go at the start of the first race. We have Tiss in the purple truck and Jay Sayel. Whoa, there goes Gina Mays down on the first turn. Oh, Gina had to go mess things up for everyone else. Jay Sayel with the lead in that white Mazda Ripu. Watch out because here comes the Kraken. Miscreant is gaining and he passes. Oh! And Miscreant strikes at the end in the Kraken. He picks up the win with a track time of 17.1 seconds. There goes Tiss wrecked over on two. And Gina Mays down over on the first corner. Let's look at the replay of what happened there. Gina Mays all alone in the back. Ouch. I don't know what happened there. I'll tell you exactly what happened right there. She crashed. Yeah, well, I, I got that much. Let's look at that amazing pass on the final stretch by Miscreants. It's like he gets a burst of speed coming out of that corner and just flies past the finish line. With a name like the Kraken, these other drivers should be scared. Here we go with race two. We have Jay Sial on the front right in the white truck and Miscreants on the left in the Kraken van. Let's see if the Kraken can do it again. Miscreants with a slight lead in the van, pulling ahead right here. A close race around the corner. Miscreants growing that lead. Jay Sale in second, Tiss in third. Whoa, Miscreants Whoa. slides out of control. I hear cops. Tiss takes the lead in the purple pickup. The Kraken is still in it. And Tiss will take the checkered flag on the second race of the night with a track time of 18.286 seconds. Looks like the Kraken got sideways again, this time blocking the entire road. I don't see the police down here, so they lucked out. Oh, well, there he is. Looks like the Popo couldn't hang with the street racers. It looks like Gina Mays is also having trouble keeping up. That's two wrecks in a row by Gina Mays. Let's go to the replay. Here comes Miscreants right here taps that side wall and then gets sideways. Gina Mays goes tumbling over. Here comes the pursuit car with the lights off strategy. Oh, he turned him on there. Now it looks like he has Gina Mays right there pulled over. I'm not sure what happened after that. Oh, he drove right past Gina Mays. Maybe he was trying to get the other two cars. Maybe he figured she was having a bad enough night already. Well, his night wasn't any better. Here we go with race three. We have Miscreants and Gina Mays in the front row. Let's see if Gina Mays can find her way to the finish line. If Gina Mays can just not crash, 
that alone would be a big improvement. Yeah, you know, street racing isn't necessarily for everyone. Wait, do you think Gina Mays is related to Shelby Mays? The one we wrote a song about? Yeah, that one. No, nah, Shelby Mays was fast. Speaking of fast, check out that Kraken. That van is on fire. And look at that time, 16.782 seconds. That's the second win of the night for the miscreants in the Kraken. You know, it's hard not to cheer for a vehicle with a good name. Oh, totally. Name choice is so important. A lot of people miss that. I mean, how am I supposed to cheer for Danny's Cabeza? Or Tornado Tornado. But the Kraken, I mean, that's just epic. And when you look at the van and the paint job, it makes sense. Look at this, another exchange between the Pursuit Car and Gina Mays. Once again, somehow Gina Mays avoids getting impounded. A big congrats to Gina Mays for making it past the finish line for the first time. And it only took a police escort for her to do it. Here we go with race four. A look at the scoreboard. We have Miscreants on top with 10 points. Tiss has six points in that purple truck. JCL also with six points in the white Mazda. And Gina Mays with two. Whoa, Gina Mays almost jumps to the track. That almost caused a wreck for Tiss. Tiss with the lead followed by JCL. Tiss and JCL both tied in second for points. A win here can put them on top. It's a close one at the finish. And Tiss takes the win. And that's going to put Tiss in the lead as the miscreants get a DNF behind Gina Mays. Let's see, that's three wrecks for Gina Mays. Can we call the cops ourselves to come impound cars? That would probably be frowned upon by, you know, the other racers. Yeah, I guess so. Here we go with race five, and this is what race five is all about. The top two drivers in the front row, only one point separating them. Who's gonna take it, Tiss or Miscreants? Let's go. Tiss in the purple truck, Miscreants in the pink Kraken van. The Kraken's looking good. Let's see how they do on turn two. They had trouble here earlier. A clean exit. Tiss Rex coming off two. Here they go into three. Release the Kraken. The Kraken has been released. And the Miscreants will be your winner of the night. Look at that. The police passed up another two vehicles. You know, I'm guessing these guys aren't going fast enough to be considered street racing. Ah, uh, that must be the case. I mean, nobody here thinks Gina Mays is street racing. <laughs> That's for sure. Let's take one more look at that amazing run by Miscreants in the Kraken van. Whoa, look at the purple truck rolled over. Let's see. He rolled over and then back over again and somehow was able to finish the race. Impressive driving by Tiss. Here we go, race one of five. The top driver will advance on to the third tournament in King of the Mountain. Terrence Jr. already off to a big lead in that purple Evo. 213 racing in second in that Volvo. Oh man, I can always see where this race is going. Yeah, the other drivers appear to be outmatched by Terrence Jr. I mean, just look at that. A big win there by Terrence Jr. And he gets a track time of 16.428 seconds. A close call at the intersection. All the drivers made it down the mountain in one piece. I think they're hoping to avoid any police activity tonight. Wow, that was a close call between Nick Black and 213 Racing. That was super close. Here it is again. Oh, wow, man. how did they not hit? I don't know, but that was a close one. Here we go with race two. We've got Terrence Jr. on the front right and 213 Racing on the front left. I don't think that Volvo has any chance against that Evo. Evo certainly do have a reputation of being fast on the mountain. Although it does depend on who built it. Nah, it's all about who's behind the wheel, and Terrence Jr. knows what he's doing. Terrence Jr. way ahead. He's followed by 2 and 3 racing, but he's way back there. And Terrence Jr. picks up his second win back to back. And look at that, another 16 second time. Terrence certainly has some skills behind the wheel. That second win puts him ahead by four points. He has a total of 10, 2 and 3 racing with six. Nick Black and Burt Buzzard both with three. Look at the way he's handling these corners with speed and precision. Yeah, his exits on those corners are really clean. I don't think these other guys have a chance. Well, the next two races, Terrence Jr. will be starting from the back. Let's see if he can find his way around the front row. We have 2 and 3 racing on the front right in the Volvo, and Burt Buzzard in the Mazda RX-7 with the really big wheels. Too big. It's a little oversized. 2 and 3 racing in the league with Terrence Jr. bump drafting off his tail. 2 and 3 pulling ahead now. Terrence Jr. in pursuit in that Evo. They're rounding the final corner, and here comes Terrence Jr. Oh! at the finish line. Whoa! What a race right down to the checkered flag. We're going to have to go to replay to see who won that. If Terrence Jr. got that one, that's going to be three wins in a row. Let's see, here they come. Oh, he was ah. so close. 
check out that time though. So far, every race tonight has been in the 16 second range. Some fast racing for sure, but that's what happens when you get a fast Evo on the track. Terrence Jr. putting on a good show here. Two and three racing, moving up in points. He now has 11. That puts him two behind Terrence Jr. Both 213 Racing and Terrence Jr. starting from the back row. We've got Burt Buzzard and Nick Black in the front. Nick Black leading down the straight in that green Alfa Romeo. I think he's getting pushed by Terrence. Terrence Jr. in second. He's going for the pass. Nick Black with some serious blocking there. Nick Black spins out. Terrence Jr. trying to get him out of the way. Burt Buzzard right there with him. Here they come out of the final corner. Terrence Jr. pulling ahead now. Here he comes. And Terrence Jr. will take his third win of the night. Look at that 3D. It's all over. Oh, it is. Terrence Jr. has a seven-point lead, so we will not be running the fifth race. Terrence Jr. is your winner of the night and will be advancing on to the third tournament in King of the Mountain. You've got to admire his determination right here. He was getting blocked all kinds of ways by that Alfa Romeo, but he kept pushing and pushing until he found his way through. Yeah, that Evo is definitely going to be a contender for the crown in this tournament. We've got Brandon Padgett, Anthony Woodley in the front row, Tanner Williams and Dee Dee in the back. American Muscle versus JDM. Here we go at the start of the first race. Anthony Drift King Woodley in the lead as they approach the first corner. Dee Dee following close behind right on his tail. The two American cars have fallen way behind. It's just the two Nissans right now. Dee Dee appears to be having some steering issues in that skyline. Anthony Woodley approaching the finish. And that's a strong win for Anthony Drift King Woodley. I'm not sure what's going on with the Ford and the Chevy, but they need to pick up the pace. Anthony Woodley with a 17.426 second track time. You can see right here, Didi having a lot of steering issues, bouncing back and forth on the track. All that contact is going to slow you way down. Also, the Fujiwara Tofu Shop parking lot is being used tonight to film a scene for an upcoming blockbuster movie. Apparently, it's based on the true life story of Crazy Jimmy. Who knew Crazy Jimmy had such a fascinating life? Uh, yeah, apparently he's had the pedal to the metal in life for a long time now. Former undercover cop turned street racer, NASCAR driver. I'm not sure how much of that is actually true. Driving coach for Ken Block. Was he? One full season on Top Gear as the Stig. That seems like a stretch. He designed the course for Hyperdrive on Netflix. I didn't see his name in the credits. And the stunt director for all the Fast and Furious movies, except for Tokyo Drift. We need to fact check all of that. Dee Dee way down the track, out in the lead. Whoa, she almost lost it right there. Dee Dee still having trouble steering that car, but she will pick up the win on race two with a track time of 18.2. Whoa! Ooh, a three-car fender bender. You think that's going to get the cops out here? This is King of the Mountain. That's hardly considered a wreck. That's true. They don't usually show up until someone's on their roof. Here's a look at Dee Dee. Was doing fine. Hit the side barrier. That almost spun her car completely around. I think something might be off with that car. Yeah, she's having a lot of steering issues. Cannot keep it straight. Look at that. Even right there. A little tap on the side. Let's take a better look at that collision. Here comes Tanner Williams in the white shadow. Boom. Slams right into the side of Dee Dee. Maybe that hit will help correct the steering on her car. Here's another look. Someone lost some paint on that one. That's going to tie Dee Dee with Anthony Woodley. Both drivers have eight points. Brandon Padgett currently has four, and Tanner Williams has two. Dee Dee and Tanner starting in the front this race. Dee Dee already ahead by about three to four car lengths as they go into the first turn. That's a fast skyline. Let's see how her handling does on the open track. Around turn two. Nice, clean exit. Anthony Woodley in second, followed by Tanner Williams. The American cars once again way behind. And Dee Dee will pick up her second win of the night Whoa. with that track time of 16.182 seconds. That is a fast time. A very close call at the intersection between Dee Dee and Anthony Woodley. That win right there puts Dee Dee in the lead by two points. Look at how well she handled turn two. A big improvement from the previous races. And then look at her exit from turn three. Clean and straight. I think she has Tanner Williams to thank for that. How so? He sideswiped her car and fixed her alignment issues. You know, you have a lot of crazy ideas. You mean genius ideas. No, I don't mean that. But this one actually might make some sense. I guess I'll take that as a compliment. Here we go, race four. We've got Tanner Williams and Bobby Padgett in the front row. Tanner in the white Camaro, Bobby Padgett in the blue 4 GT. It's a very close race. Tanner Williams in the front, followed by Dee Dee. An American car is finally in the lead. Whoa, Tanner swerving out of control. He's sideways, Dee Dee trying to push her way through. Everybody bunched up on the final turn. Dee Dee takes the lead, and Dee Dee will take her third win in a row. Wow, she is on fire tonight. Very impressive driving there by Dee Dee. Let's look at the replay. 
She was trying to find her way around Tanner Williams. She got blocked right here as Tanner went sideways. Look at the teamwork right here. Here comes the Ford to try to push the Chevy. And then here comes the Nissan to give the Skyline the boost to take the win. A very close finish right here between the white Chevy and the white Nissan. Tanner in the Camaro, Anthony Drifting Woodley in the Nissan. We're going to have to go to the finish cam to see who won that. And it's going to be Tanner Williams. He takes second place by a fender. Didi on top of the board with 18 points. Anthony Woodley with 13. That's a five point lead. So we will be going to the fifth race. Here we go, race five. The drivers are lined up based on their score. Didi gets the pole position. Anthony Woodley on her left. And they're off for the final race. Didi once again fast out of the gates with a big lead on the first straight. She is crushing it out there. Okay, don't say crushing it. We don't want her to wreck. Here she goes round two. Wild steering coming out of two for Didi. Looks like the Chevy and the Ford are out of the race. And here comes Didi all by herself. And that right there is four wins in a row. An amazing performance tonight by Didi, who's driving for Big Al's Customs. She's showing these boys who's boss tonight. And what a sad, sad performance. Be nice to be. By the drivers of the American cars. All right, come on. Let, let it go. Bobby Randall Padgett and Tanner Theodore Williams. You both should be ashamed of yourselves. You know their full names? Uh, no, I just made that up for dramatic effect. I'm guessing plan A failed. Oh, okay. I was thinking of something completely different. I'm not even going to ask what you were thinking about. There were 70s vans, man. You know, it was a wild time back then. You weren't even born back then. You were born in the 80s. Yeah, exactly. It only takes nine months. You know what? Never mind. We've got Ian McCloskey out in the front in the Thunder Wind. McGee currently in second driving the white Honda. Whoa, McCloskey's on the edge. McGee pulls into first. McCloskey going backwards. That was a close one back there. And the first win will go to McGee. Driving in the Honda Odyssey, McCloskey pulls it in reverse to take second place. Looks like we're missing two drivers. And Jake is upside down in the orange van. And Pickle Rick over on his side. Whenever you get all vans on the track, it's going to be a wild race. Yeah, Ian McCloskey almost pulls a McClyde back there. Race in peace, race McClyde. Peace it once again begs the question, why haven't we put a guardrail there? Yeah, why haven't we? We kind of used them all up on the new DRC track. Can't we just make some more? Well, those were made by Dave Akers Customs. And, you know, if it wasn't made by Dave, it, it was, was made, made by, by someone, someone else. else. Yeah, it makes sense. Here we go with race two. Ian McCloskey out in the lead again. He's got about a four to five van length lead. Jake is in second in the orange Chevy van. Here comes the Pobo. And the police are out after that wreck. Pickle Rick got passed up by the cops. Now, how embarrassing is that? It can't be more embarrassing than being named after a pickle. Ian McCloskey picks up the win on race two. McGee comes in second with Jake in third. Pickle Rick technically came in fifth. He shouldn't even get that point. Officer Perez out there on the prowl looking for a van to impound tonight. Pickle Rick going so slow, that can't be considered street racing. He might need some new batteries in that electric pickle. You can see right there, Jake spinning out in that orange van. McGee with a nice pass at the finish line. Here we go with race three. McGee and Pickle Rick will be leading us down the track. Let's see if Pickle Rick can pick up the pace on this one. That's a tongue twister. And they're off. Pickle Rick once again falling behind, blocking Jake. McGee and McCloskey out in front. Ian McCloskey staying right behind that Odyssey. Here they come into turn two. McGee looking good. Nice exit out of the corner. Here he goes into three. Great handling so far by McGee. He's straight as an arrow coming out of three. And McGee will pick up his second win of the night. This time getting a track time of 17.828 seconds. Jake and Pickle Rick come to a stop before the finish line. A double DNF. And look at their sad, pathetic score. 2D two points and one point. Hey, it's better than zero, and we've had drivers get zero. It might as well be zero. Come on now. A lot of understeering coming out of that corner by Ian McCloskey and Pickle Rick. How is Jake so slow on this race? Maybe he's pressing the wrong pedal. Here we go with race four. We've got Pickle Rick and Jake in the front row. The two slowest drivers in the front, and this is probably not going to be good. Jake out in the lead with the orange Chevy van. It's a close group of vans right here. McCloskey looking for a way around Jake. Taps him on the rear end. Oh, Whoa. and Ian McCloskey is down. That was a big wreck. Jake looking good through three. Pickle Rick in second place. And Jake will pick up his first win of the night, followed by... Whoa. Boom. McGee takes second place in the white Honda Odyssey. Pickle Rick comes in third. And a DNF for Ian McCloskey. That's going to put McGee up by five points. He has 16 Ian McCloskey has 11. 
Jake seven, Pickle Rick three. Let's take a look at what happened coming out of that turn. McCloskey hits the side barrier, turns sideways, flips over and gets pushed out of the way by Pickle Rick. Here's that crash at the finish. Ooh, a hard hit by Jake. Good thing he has State Farm Insurance. Pickle Rick coming through to break up the fight between the Chevy and the Honda. Here's a look from the Skycam. Man, that Honda got pounded. It really does look like van wrestling at the intersection. Ooh, the WWV. Hmm, might not be a bad idea. Steve, get on that. Here we go with race five. The drivers are positioned based on points. McGee in the white Honda van with a five point lead. The only way Ian McCloskey has a chance is if McGee wrecks and he comes in first. A close race between Ian McCloskey and McGee. One of the closest races of the night, McCloskey pulling ahead. Use the Triforce, Ian. McGee in second, Jake in third. McCloskey's lead is growing. I hear the cops again. McGee getting pushed by Jake. Whoa. Some aggressive police tactics back there. And Ian McCloskey will take the win. And that's gonna tie it Whoa, up. Oh, no way. Wow, for the first time in a long time, we are going to have to go to a tiebreaker race. Oh yeah. Some wild action here on turn three. Look at that, Pickle Rick slamming into the back end of Jake. He's off the side of the road, falls over. Officer Perez pulls him over along with Jake, but Mickey was far enough away from the police car and managed to get away. Well, that gets the two slowest vans out of the way so we can see McGee and McCloskey go at it head to head. Looking at the times, McGee had the faster track time tonight so he will get the inside lane advantage on this tiebreaker race. Here we go, McGee in the white Honda, Ian McCloskey in the black Supervan. Plan B versus Thunder Win. It's a close race down the first stretch. Ian McCloskey in the lead. McGee closing that gap. They're onto the open track. McCloskey with a boost of speed. This is a good one. McCloskey fits chilling. He spins around. McGee takes the lead. Into the final corner. McGee oh, wrecks. Oh, no. McCloskey runs into him. He's still going! Oh, this is crazy! And McCloskey wow. will take the win in the tiebreaker race, going in reverse. What a wild ride that last race was. Oh man, the lead changed twice. We had Vans spinning around, Vans flipping over. I flip and loved it, 3D. There's always some entertainment when you get Vans out there on the track at Race Mountain. And these drivers did not disappoint. Look at how high McGee was up on that bank turn. He almost made it but he just did not have enough speed. Ian McCloskey definitely has some skills in the reverse driving department. I thought he was gonna get stuck behind McGee's Honda, but he found his way around it and took it all the way to the finish. The Western Pistol Pete theme, hopefully. We should have someone check that before they start racing. Here we go at the start of race one. We have McLovin on the front right in the Range Rover and Garbanzo McElroy on the front left. McLovin has the FTE package on that Range Rover. I'm interested to see how fast he can go. A tight race into the open section. Garbanzo McElroy pulling in front. Door to door on the turn. McLovin overtakes McElroy. Here they come through the final corner. Garbanzo McElroy wrecks. Whoa, Whoa. McLovin drives off the road. Oh, man. And race one will go to Bryson in the Hummer. Wow. He went from third to first place all on that last final stretch. What a wild ending to that race. Mick Levin totally blowing his lead right at the end. I don't know what happened there. And look at that. Finn has also wrecked over on turn two. Here's the replay. Look at this door-to-door -door action on turn two. Finn going way too slow in that van. Looks like he was coming to a stop right here. And they wanted to call that van King of the Mountain. Yep. <laughs> we can see over on turn three, Garbanzo McElroy wiping out. Bryson gets around that wreck, and look at McLovin just driving right off the road. No one even made contact with his car. Here we go with race two. The cops are sure to be out after that last one. McElroy on the front right, and Bryson on the left. A good start so far for Bryson. He has a five-point lead. Here he is out in front on the first straightaway. That Hummer is a big vehicle, but he's doing quite well getting around the track. Bryson stretching out his lead into the second turn. Here comes the cops. Whoa, we got a pile up. Ooh, Finn gets slammed into by the pursuit car. I think someone's getting impounded. And Bryson will pick up his second win of the night with a track time of 17.510 seconds. Oh, look at that. Finn is out. So much for being called King of the Mountain. <laughs> Come on now. Right there, we had a three car pile up. Garbanzo McElroy broke free, and then look at that. McLovin takes off, leaving Finn to take the fall. Another vehicle heading to the impound lot. Now, this is actually the first time this has happened so early in the race. We're down to three cars. That's going to actually throw the rotation off. What do you mean? Well, if a driver was supposed to start in the back row, but the car in front of him is now in the impound lot, that would put him in the front row, and then he would have an unfair advantage. You know what? Hold on. I got an idea. Okay. Uh, 
You coming back? Hold on, I'll be right back. Okay, uh, well, hold on, folks. We're, uh, we're figuring this thing out. Hello? What's going on, man? Hey, CJ, what's up, man? Hey, 2D. We need a fourth. Want to race? Yeah, man, I can use the money. All right, man, just remember me when you wax, all right? They got deep pockets? Uh, by the looks of their cars, no. Hey, that's cool. I'll be there. Shake and bake? Shake and bake. <clears throat> all right, good news. We have a fourth, and he's on his way. Oh, sweet. Who is it? Allow me to do a proper introduction. Can I use that mic? Thanks. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen. Here comes your celebrity driver of the night, winner of the 2020 Stock Car Tournament, and the 2020 3D Pop Maker Diecast Racing League Champion, Crazy J! Shake and bake! Shake and bake! Perfect! Shake and bake! Okay, I think we Shake got it. Shake and bake! Alright, calm down, you got a little too turned up over that. Shake and bake! Okay, we got it, man, we got it's it. It's just so good. Okay, let it go. Let it go. Shake and bake. Are you done? Maybe. Okay, here we go. James will be taking the spot of Finn, although he's not actually competing to get into the tournament for King of the Mountain. So he won't be scoring any points. He's just there to keep things even and fair. I'm hoping he wins this race. A close race between James and Bryson. Bryson pulls ahead coming out of the corner. Bryson is just killing it on the track today. Whoa, looks like the cameraman hit something. Here comes the 5-0. Oh, yeah. Did you warn James that the cops might be out here? Um, I might have left that part out. I'd really hate to see that car get impounded. I'm sure it'll be fine. This time, all the drivers make it down to the finish line, and Bryson picks up his third win in a row. Wow, shots fired by Bryson and Pistol Pete. That's what I call bringing a gun to a gunfight. He is just completely dominating 15 points on the board. Crazy James comes in second place on that run. McLovin has two points. Garbanzo McElroy has won. This race is really over at this point, but we did have Crazy James come all the way out here, so we're gonna run one more race just for the fun of it. James starting in the front row. I think he's gonna take the win over these modified cars. Well, he's going up against Mick Levin. More like Mick Slow. Bryson is starting behind James. Garbanzo McElroy already falling way behind. Here they go around the first turn. James in the lead. Bryson right on his tail. Bryson moves to the outside. He's going for the pass. Come on, shake and bake, James. Bryson takes the lead. Man, he is good. Through the final turn. And Bryson will pick up its fourth win in a row. A clean sweep, 3D. A clean sweep. That is impressive. It didn't matter where he started from, the front, the back. You can throw Crazy James in the mix. Bryson was going to finish first place each and every time. Yeah, you got to give it up to Bryson. He may not have been the fastest driver we've ever seen, but he really knows how to get around the other drivers and work his way up to first place. Just look at how well he was able to handle his corners in the H2 Hummer. It's a big vehicle, but Bryson knows how to tame it. Here we go with the start of the first of five races. We have Flea Montpelier on the front right and CJ on the front left. That Chevy C10 has the most weight in today's race and those FTE wheels, it should be fast. Key Grant bump drafting in that limo. Whoa, he's going off the road. Watch out. CJ and Silverback both avoid the collision. Montpelier way on the lead and he will take the first race no problem at all with a track time of 17.286 seconds. CJ takes second on that race, Silverback taking third. And that's going to be a DNF for Key Grant in that limousine. He was doing well. It was a close race. I'm not sure what happened, but he went right off the road right here. He might have had a little too much sangria. I thought he was going to cause a pileup right here, but look at CJ. Great driver instincts to go around that limo. Yeah, reflexes like that are the difference between getting a DNF and getting some points on the board. Great driving by CJ and Silverback. Here we go with race two. CJ on the front right, Silverback on the left. It's a close race so far. Silverback with a slight lead going into the first turn. It's a close one. CJ and Silverback going back and forth on the lead. Silverback pulls ahead. A lot of contact into turn two. Silverback still in the lead. A fight for second between CJ and Key Grant. Here comes Fee Montpelier and down goes Key Grant. That will be another DNF for him and Silverback will take the win on this one. There was a lot of back and forth on that race. Yeah, there was a lot of paint swapping there. A slow time though, 20.686 seconds for Silverback. Key Grant just not having a good race tonight. That limo seems like it might be fast, but he just cannot seem to finish a race. Flea Montpelier bullying his way through traffic right there. That's the advantage of having that extra weight. Yeah, having extra weight can be a good thing. Thank you. That's what I've been saying for years. This big gut right here is a good thing. We're talking about the cars too. It applies to this too. Okay, well, I'm not going to body shame anyone on the air, so. Nothing to be ashamed of here, 3D. All right. This big, beautiful specimen is called the man. Okay, let's get back to the race. Whoa, Flea Montpelier wrecks. Wow, he almost went off the cliff. 
Key Grant all by himself, and he'll pick up the win on race three with a decent time, 17.182 seconds. A solid win for Key Grant, but he is still way behind in points. Yeah, he's still on the bottom of the scoreboard with those two DNFs in the first two races. Also, I'm surprised the cops didn't come out on that race. Yeah, maybe they got stuck or something, I'm not sure. Here's the replay, Flea Montpelier almost falling off the side of the cliff. Look at that again from this angle. Wow, he is very, very lucky. And good driving once again by Silverback and CJ, avoiding that wreck. Both drivers seem to be playing it safe in this race, and it is paying off. Yeah, they are in first and second place. They're not breaking any records, but they are putting points on the board with their consistency. This time, Key Grant and Flea Montpelier are in the front row. They are the two fastest drivers in this race. Flea gets sideways, oh, and both oh, drivers no. are out! A double wipeout on two. The police are in pursuit of Silverback. Don't mess up. Silverback rounding the final turn. The police right on his tail. Whoa. Whoa! He just tried to push the police car off the road. An aggressive move by King Silverback. I, I thought we agreed not to call anyone King. Well, that was a pretty boss move right there. Yeah, it was. I liked it. Flea Montpelier down again in the Chevy C10. That's his second DNF in a row. And that is Key Grant's third DNF for the night. The officer should have stopped right there and took both those guys to the impound lot. Might as well. They have zero chance of winning tonight, which is a shame because they both have faster vehicles than CJ or Silverback. It doesn't do you any good to have a bunch of speed if you cannot control it. And here we go with race five. The drivers are lined up based on their points. King Silverback in the pole position, CJ next to him. This race is now between those two drivers. Four points separating them. The only chance CJ has is if Silverback wrecks and he gets first place. CJ out in the lead as they approach the open section. Key Grant cutting off Silverback. Uh-oh. Flea Montpelier wrecks again on turn two. I think CJ's got this one. Not so fast. Silverback is still in the race. And CJ will pick up the win, followed by Key Grant. And here comes Silverback taking third. So I think Silverback will be advancing. Uh, yes, Silverback will take the win by one point. Wow, that's a close one. It looks like that Chevy C10 might be headed to the impound lot. Here's a look at the replay. I thought for sure we were going to see three cars go down right there. Silverback was lucky to get out there without wrecking. And you can see right here, Officer Perez decides to pull over and just take the truck. You know the old saying, one street racer wrecked is worth two on the road. Here we go with race one of five. Stephen McWin and CJ Racer 19 starting off in the front row. I gotta say, I'm not really a Ford guy, but these cars look good. They certainly do. Stephen McWin off to an early lead, followed by League of Speed. CJ Racer back in third. Steve McWin looking good so far. League of Speed not far behind. He's closing in. Oh, oh he's oh, over. League of Speed Rex. And Stephen McWin will take the checkered flag on race one. He gets an 18.184 second track time. League of Speed upside down in that Ford Shelby concept. He was trying to make the pass, but ran out of room. Look at this block by McQuinn. League of Speed thought he was going to take him on the right, but McQuinn said, not on my watch. Let's take another look at that. Both drivers cut hard to the right coming out of that turn. You've got to appreciate League of Speed's desire to win there, but there's always a gamble in making a move like that on the track. Yeah, if he made the pass, he would have five points, but this time he came up with zero. And here we go with race two. Electric EV and the orange car off to an early lead as they go through turn one. League of Speed tailgating. You can tell he feels the pressure to make up for that DNF. He is aggressive out there. Electric EV getting some distance here. Oh, oh Electric EV is down on the last turn. Wipeout. League of Speed gets around him and he will take the win on race two. Oh, uh, here come the cops again. You know, I'm not sure if their effort in making Race Mountain safer is actually working. Well, we haven't had any major wrecks, so. Yeah, but I don't see how them chasing the cars is helping with that. Well, the impound lot certainly seems to be happy with the arrangement. That's true. Next week, we will see the first ever impound lot race. Maybe the first and last. Uh, yeah, we'll have to see how it goes. All the cars in the impound lot will race at one time. That's crazy. In an elimination style race. This is a ridiculous idea. This was Susan's idea. This is a brilliant idea. There's also quite a few vans in the impound lot, so I think it may be another McClyde waiting to happen. Race piece McClyde. Here we go with race three, League of Speed in the front row this time along with Electric Eevee. Let's see how League of Speed does with no one in his way. He's looking good, Electric Eevee not far behind. Here they go through turn two with some fish tailing. Eevee falling behind. League of Speed really opening that thing up. He's got a big lead now. And League of Speed will pick up a second win in a row. Whoa, Electric Eevee got knocked out. Another DNF for Electric Eevee. Well, thank goodness the cops are out here to help. 
Oh, that's right, they just drove past him. That's gonna move League of Speed up to first place in points. He has a one point lead over Steve McWin and CJ Racer. Let's see what went wrong for Evie. I think it all went wrong when they named the car found on Road Dead. I was gonna say it went wrong when they chose to drive a Ford. Whoa, but... come on now. Let's not alienate our Ford fans out there. Are there really Ford fans? Yeah, of course. Oh. There's lots of them. I always thought Ford drivers just kind of got stuck with that car. Like an old hand-me-down that nobody wants. Okay, Susan is asking me to read this paper. Tootie's opinions expressed on this channel are his and his alone. They do not reflect the views or values of the 3D Bot Maker channel. Wow, guys, did we really need a disclaimer? Apparently so. I don't see anyone on this team driving a Ford. Well, that's because we have good taste. League of Speed back in the lead, followed once again by Electric Eevee. League of Speed trying for three in a row here. Electric Eevee not letting up. <laughs> and never mind, Electric Eevee is out. Ah, oh my goodness. And League of Speed gets his third win of the night. Oh, wow. Solid track time there, 17.496 seconds. He now has a three-point lead over Stephen McWynn. All I can think of right here is, have you driven a Ford lately? Boom. That car is not balanced for this track at all. I don't think that car is balanced for the road, period. Well, they certainly picked a fitting name for that car. We will be going into race five. The drivers will be lined up based on their current standing. League of Speed is in the pole position with Stephen McWynn on the outside. The top two drivers going head to head with a three point difference in their score. Stephen McWynn has kind of been laying back in this race. He did win the first one, but more importantly, he's been making it past the finish line consistently. League of Speed pulling away from the pack. He's looking fast into turn two. That car is flying. Whoa, he hits the side. Ooh. Whoa. Oh, oh man, I did not mean flying oh, like that. man, that's not good. That was a bad one. Steve, call the paramedics. This is bringing back some old feelings right here. I mean, talk about deja vu. Another Ford off the side of the mountain. Tootie, it's not time for Ford jokes right I'm now. I'm not making jokes. McClyde had a Ford Transit van. League of Speed had a Ford Shelby concept don't car. Don't say had. We don't know his status well, yet. Well, even if he's okay, that car is not. Are they on their way yet? They're pulled up right Looks now. like CJ got stuck over there with the police officer. That might be an impound for him. Okay, the paramedics are here. Let's take a look at what happened. It looks like a textbook McClyde maneuver. Yeah, he hits the right wall, left wall, and then over. Ooh. Race in peace, League of Speed. Okay, you're way, way too early with that. Sorry, it's a habit. Well, I guess the good news is that new Type 1 garage broke his fall. Model cars, Houston.com for it, the win. It might not be the best time to do a plug right now. League of Speed getting some proper medical care. Yeah, no mechanics with motor oil this time. Uh, you might have spoke too soon. What happened to that guy? Hopefully he didn't get hit. If he did, the waiver does cover falling cars, I, I think. Hold on, I gotta go check on that. And welcome back to King of the Mountain. Here we are for the first ever Impound Lot race. All the cars from the Impound Lot will be given a second chance tonight to earn the last spot in Tournament 3. Here we go, this is a first for Race Mountain. Seven cars racing at one time. We're either gonna see some good racing here or a complete mess. I'm leaning towards a complete mess. And there they go, they're off. Fleamont in the lead, followed by Finn in the King of Hearts van. Those two pulling ahead from the pack. Keep in mind, if you wreck, you are out, and there goes Finn. That was fast. Looks like Fleamont has this one in the bag. Oh, oh no, he goes down too. This is going about how I expected. Andrew L gives him a tap as he makes the pass, and it looks like Andrew L will be the only one to pass the finish line. Let's see what the damages are. Fleamont in the Hendrix is out. CJ Racer 19 in that green Ford is okay. Juicy Juice and Pickle Rick are safe. And Finn in the King Hearts van is out. You know, I'm actually surprised to only see two vehicles upside down. Two down, five to go. Look at this, Fleamont and Finn, both with a big lead over the rest of the pack. That van is not balanced for racing. Yeah, neither is the truck. Fleamont had such a big lead and then he just blows it right there. Well, they were in the impound lot for a reason. Yeah, this may not have been such a great idea. Hey, watching vans and trucks wreck, I'm entertained. And here we go with race two, we have five vehicles left. Andrew L and CJ Racer 19 are in the front row. CJ Racer going from the third row to the front all in one race. And here they all go again, most certainly to another catastrophe. CJ Racer 19 pulling ahead into the first corner. Andrew L right next to him. A side-by-side -side battle into the open track. CJ Racer pulling ahead. Here come the bands and down goes Jake in the roadie. We've got four racers left, CJ in the lead. And it looks like CJ will be safe this round along with Andrew L, Juicy Juice, and Pickle Rick. It's nice to see everyone making past the finish line this time. Well, almost everyone. That's right, we'll be saying goodbye to our good neighbor Jake in the roadie van. That is two vans out, the only one left is Pickle Rick. I'm just glad no one's driven off the road. Don't jinx it. Since we haven't got the guardrails up yet. We will have them up in time for the tournament. Well, it's nice to see you putting driver safety first. What do you mean we always put driver safety first? That's why we have them sign a waiver. That's not really safety. Of course it is. Here we go, we've got four left. CJ Racer 19 on the front right, Andrew L on the front left. 
Juicy Juice and Pickle Rick in the back row. Let's see who's gonna wreck this time or come in last place. CJ Racer is looking good. Here they come to turn two, and Andrew oh, L is over. What happened? And there goes Pickle Rick oh. and Juicy Juice. Wow, that's three for the price of one there. That means CJ Racer 19 is your winner of the night. CJ Racer 19 didn't need to go fast. He just had to survive. What a mess on turn two. A beautiful, beautiful mess. Kind of what I expected for the first and last impound lot race. Oh, uh, we should do it again. Well, with the night racing now being somewhat official, there won't be any more impound. Hey, I've got an idea. Oh, no. Come on, hear me out. We should do this again next tournament, but instead use all the second place drivers from each of the qualifying races. That's actually a pretty good idea. That's a better idea than this was. Thank you. See, I have ideas too. I never say you didn't have ideas. It's more about the quality of your hey, ideas. come on. But no, no, this was a good one. And there you have it, all 16 qualifiers for King of the Mountain Tournament number three. It's been a long time coming, but tournament time is here. Yes, it is. Will we have a new King of the Mountain? or will the FGC family reign supreme? Keep it tuned right here on the 3D Bot Maker channel because Tournament 3 will be starting soon on King of, of the, the Mountain. Mountain.